kind of neat this time of day that I find myself in when the sun is at a kind of an interesting angle and I have the umbrella at an angle and the day seems to kind of pull itself in kind of like a midday almost or like a noonday and I always kind of feel as though I've walked into the cleft of the rock that I'm going to be kind of standing inside the cliffside and God is going to walk by as he did with Moses you know and it's <laughs> maybe it's goofy but for me it's pretty real because when I first step out it's like all of a sudden everything goes shoo, extremely quiet you could hear a pin drop and it gets real intense for a moment and I go ooh, can we go home now <laughs> you know maybe that's just me maybe it applies to you too but I know in my day there are times where I feel like heaven is right there you know it's just just closing your eyes and opening it again and being able to see what you could not see before and when you do you'll be amazed at what's waiting for you in emotional and my utmost for his highest dependent on God's presence they that wait upon the Lord shall walk and not faint Isaiah 40:31. There is no thrill in walking. It is the test of all the stable qualities. There is no thrill in walking. It is the test of all the stable qualities. To walk and not faint is the highest reach possible for strength. The word walk is used in the Bible to express the character. John, looking on Jesus as he walked, said, Behold the Lamb of God. There is never anything abstract in the Bible. It is always vivid and real. God does not say, be spiritual, but walk before me. When we are in an unhealthy state physically or emotionally, we always want thrills. We're thrill seekers. We want to be satisfied. In the physical domain, this will lead to counterfeiting the Holy Spirit. In the emotional life, it leads to inordinate affection and destruction of morality. And in the spiritual domain, if we insist on get, getting thrills and the willy jillies and the feel goods, then instead of mounting up with wiggle, instead of mounting up with wings as eagles, it will end in destruction of spirituality. And there are many that fall into that trap because they're seeking to feel rather than to know. The reality of God's presence is not dependent on any place, but only dependent upon the determination to set the Lord always before us, always the Lord before the experience. Our problems come when we refuse to bank on the reality of His presence with us. The experience the psalmist speaks of, therefore will we not fear, though will be ours when we once are based on reality not the consciousness of God's presence, but the reality of it. In other words, it's not based upon what you feel, it's not based upon the fact of God there. When you only operate according to your feelings, you're always seeking a spiritual buzz. But when you don't have the feeling, God hasn't deserted you. God is still there. At critical moments, it is necessary to ask guidance. but ought to be unnecessary to be saying always, Oh Lord, direct me here, direct me there, direct me anywhere. Of course he will. God directs you as you set him before you each day. If our common sense decisions are not his order, he will press through them and give us a check. He'll tell us. Then we must be quiet and wait for direction of his presence. You know, there's so many people that I did. I am fascinated by, even as you know, Chambers mentions that, operate according to just feeling, as though God was just a sugar rush, God is just a caffeine rush, God is just a power drink, God is just a quick fix by shooting up a needle, God is just a quick fix by getting a high. No, that's not God, that's your flesh. The reality of God living in you which is the word we use, Emmanuel, God with us, is that God is a living, expressive being. He is able to communicate to you. 
And the way he's done that is he gave us Jesus, his son, so that we could see, feel, touch, and know that there is the Son of Man whom God has expressed himself in to reveal to us that we can speak to God and God can hear us. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice and they know me, and they will not follow the voice of another. He said, I speak to my Father, and my Father speaks to me. I see my Father doing these things, and I do only those things that please Him. Jesus, as our Savior, gave us the obvious reality of knowing that we can experience God in a real, practical, personal, intimate way. If you're settling for anything less, then maybe you're standing in the way of God rather than with God. So, for me, I'd, I'd say, get with it. God meant what he said and said what he meant. Read the Bible. It's pretty simple. He said, if any man opened the door, literally, I would come in and sup with him and he with me. And that was Jesus speaking to, it's kind of embarrassing, but he was talking to the church at the time. And unfortunately, there are many people that are religious and they may be righteous and they may look holy and they may feel right, act right, think right, and prophesy and do all kinds of wonderful things in his name. But how many hear him speak? Jesus wants you to hear him. He wants you to know him. He doesn't want you to experience him through all the people gathered together because that's a good experience you should go to church you should study but he wants you to know him when you're alone one-on-one -on -one, personal when you're in need when you're hurting when you're desperate and when you're joyful so be still get away from everything try to have some kind of quiet time and then ask god if he's real Ask Jesus if he's going to reveal himself to you. And then, just listen. Just listen. Because that's all you need to do.